What's going on everyone? I'm out doing some exploring today on the Citizen Cycle Bike. Found this road that I don't know where it goes or what's back here. We're gonna go check it out. But I also thought while we ride, maybe I would try to download some information to you about e-bikes, things I've learned over the last couple of years running this channel. I've been fortunate enough to ride a ton of different bikes. I counted the other day, I've been on 44 different e-bikes. A lot of them like this, a lot of them large fat tire e-bikes. So that's mostly what this is gonna be about, those kind of bikes. But I thought maybe I'd tell you some things I've learned. Maybe you'll find it helpful. Maybe you'll find it entertaining. We'll see. I'll try to be as concise as I can. So let's get rolling. All right, our first exploration was a bust. So we ended up in this gigantic housing complex. We're gonna just cruise through here. But back on topic, the things I've noticed about e-bikes over the years, first thing I'm gonna say is size. Bikes are extremely large. Get your eyes on an e-bike before you buy it. These 26 by four fat tire bikes are huge. They're probably double the size of a regular Walmart mountain bike that you see. They're absolutely huge and they're heavy. Go see one in person. Find someone that has one so you can try it out. Go to Cabela's or Gander Mountain, one of those outdoor companies. A lot of times they'll have them in the back of the store. You can test one out. I think people make the mistake looking at the pictures online looking at the sizing charts online and they think that they're gonna be able to access one of these bikes and really you can't the 26 by 4 fat tire bike you got to be like five seven minimum to ride this comfortably and people often think well the 20 by 4 bikes that is a kid's bike right no not at all i can ride the 20 by 4 fat tires at six feet tall no problem those are some of the most common complaints i hear that the bike is just too big and they can't ride it or it's just too heavy and they can't lift it so think about your mobility as well. I would recommend getting a step-through bike. They're way more accessible or getting just a smaller wheel bike. It's gonna be able to accommodate a much smaller rider. But about 5'7 to ride a 26 by four fat tire bike, that's gonna be ideal. Take a good look at the seat heights. And remember too, a lot of times they'll take that seat height measurement from the bottom of the pedal stroke to the seat. I take it from the ground to the top of the seat. So be cautious of that if you're looking at the sizing chart. Because once you get one of these bikes and you put a rear rack on it and you put a bag on the rack, all of a sudden that back end of the bike is really tall and it's hard to swing your leg up over. The weight, same thing. Fat tire bikes weigh about 70 pounds minimum. The ones I've gotten lately, the last like four or five bikes have been, gosh, 80 pounds, 88 pounds. They're anywhere from 78 to 90 pounds is what I've been seeing lately. They're very heavy. Can you lift that amount? If you're gonna try to put this on a bike rack or up a flight of stairs, can you lift 90 pounds? All right, that's enough on that, but they are very big. Go see one in person. The next big thing that I'm gonna tell you is range. The companies often, very often, will drastically overstate the range on the website. Yeah, technically it's possible, but they take those range tests with like a 150 pound rider and pedal assist one on flat ground. So they give you huge numbers. Take the huge number they give you, like 80 miles, cut it in half. That's pretty much gonna be your range for regular everyday riding where you're using heavy pedal assist and heavy throttle. That's what e-bikers do. We don't pedal a ton. We use a lot of throttle, a lot of pedal assist. So take the giant number for range, cut it in half. That's more realistic. All right, next thing is customer service. For e-bike companies, these are mostly direct to consumer companies right they manufacture them overseas they throw them on a cargo ship they come over here and they ship them out all over the united states there's not a whole lot of support that you get a lot of times when you call them they can walk you through some basic stuff or they can get you replacement parts if it's under warranty but the actual service and repairing the bike is on you you're gonna have to probably learn how to do a few things a lot of bike shops won't work on e-bikes they only want to do bicycle stuff. They don't want to do electronics. They don't want to do controllers and batteries and display screens. So know that about customer service. A lot of the work is going to be on you to figure out if you have a problem. All right, next thing. So in the USA, the limit you can have is 750 watts. That's, you know, your technical legal limit for an e-bike or a pedal assist bicycle. Nobody really follows that. Um, but not all 750 bikes are created equal. Right, some of them seem way more powerful, and you're saying, Well, how can that be? They're both 750 watt e bikes. There's a couple things you got to keep in mind. One is the controller. If you're looking for power and speed, you're going to want to find a bike that's got like a 25 amp controller, maybe larger. Most of them come with about a 22 amp controller. So, the bigger the amps, the more power it's going to have. 
and also the battery pack. So if it's a 48 volt battery pack versus a 52 volt, the 52 is gonna be more powerful. So take a look at those components as you're researching. If power and speed is the thing that you want, you're gonna to wanna to find a big max output on the controller and the higher the voltage on the battery, the better. I mean, that's how I made this bike so fast. This was a Rad Rover at one point, a 750 watt e-bike, which had a tiny little motor in it. If you really opened up the Rad Power motor, it was kind of like a, a 500 watt motor in there that they just kind of made output 750. And I bought aftermarket motors, Bafang motors, put 750 on the back, 750 on the front, 35 amp controllers instead of the Rad one, which was, I don't know, like 18, 16, 18 amps, something like that. So I kind of doubled the controller output and I put on dual 52 volt batteries. And this thing is an animal now. It's so fast. It just, it's crazy how fast it gets from zero to 30 and it'll go like 37 miles an hour on the throttle only. But that's enough about this creation. Back to the range for one quick second. You're gonna wanna get the biggest battery pack that you can right from the start. It's very difficult to add battery after the fact because if you get one where the battery's integrated inside the frame, you're gonna have to find one that fits in the frame that's larger, that could be very hard. So get the largest battery you can from the start. Otherwise, you're gonna have to wire up additional batteries, kind of like what I did in here. I've got a 52 volt battery pack hiding inside my rear pack that I had to you know, wire up myself, custom solder all the battery connections and everything. And I don't know that people are really gonna to wanna to do that. So get a big battery right from the get go. All right, but let's keep riding. What else have I learned here that I can download? How about folding bikes? Everybody thinks they're gonna get a folding bike and oh, I'm gonna throw it in my car or I'm gonna throw it in my camper or we'll take it with me everywhere. Just because it folds does not mean that it is easy to take with you. And those folding bikes are still pretty large and even when they're folded up, they still weigh 70 pounds. And then you're carrying an awkward 70 pounds or trying to load that in your car. I did a bunch of videos showing loading folding bikes into trucks, cars, SUVs. And don't think that you're gonna buy a folding, two folding bikes and put them in the back of your RAV4 or your Ford Escape or your Ford Bronco Sport. They're not gonna fit. You can get one in the trunk. If you wanna put two in, you gotta lay the seats down. They're that large. They're still big even when folded up unless you get one of the micro folding bikes with like 12 inch wheels on it. I'm talking mostly about the fat tire bikes. A folding fat tire bike is not easy to maneuver around. Even when I take mine places, I don't even fold it. I just throw it in the back of the truck standing up. So a folding bike does not mean easy to handle. Watch that video, you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, let's talk about some of the emails I get all the time, which are, hey, citizen, I'm considering this bike, this bike, and this one, which one should I buy? Well, you might be surprised to hear me say this, but they're, they're all largely the same. I mean, they have the same brakes, the same frames, the same displays, the same shifting mechanisms. There's a lot of pieces on all these bikes that are the same across the board, so it doesn't make a huge difference, really. Just get the one that speaks to you. A lot of times they're, they're pretty much the same thing. They got the same controller, same motor, everything. They just have different color schemes, a few different parts on them, and a different branding sticker on the side a lot of times. So don't lose any sleep over it. If it's your first e-bike, I would recommend going the cheaper route. You really need to ride and experience one. I mean, do your, your best to pick the one you think you're gonna like, but go the cheaper route, get the one, get out on one and just experience it. And then you're gonna know after, you know, six months of riding it, oh, I should have got this feature and not this one. Trust me, e-bikes tend to multiply. You're probably gonna end up buying a second one anyway. So just go out, experience one, get a feel for it, what you like, what you don't like. And then on your second purchase, then you'll probably get a bike that more suits your needs. Now, another email I get all the time is, what is the best bike for climbing hills? I live in a hilly area. Well, from what I've seen, the best hill climbing bikes have been dual motor bikes. I like the dual motor bikes. They just have gobs and gobs of power. It is so nice on the hills. The mid drives have good torque, but you're relegated to the bike's gearing for going up hills. When you have dual hub motors, you know, you get all that speed and power, there's, the gearing's not involved in any way, and they just drag you up the hill like crazy. They have so much more power. Having two wheels drive you up the hill is a big difference. The other thing is if you're climbing really like short, steep hills, when you start to slow down at the top and you get to the top, if you're on a, or just a rear wheel drive or a mid drive bike, 
a lot of times the front end can start to come up in the air a little bit if it's really steep and you're on a steep angle. With the dual motor bikes, when you get up to that top point like that, instead of the wheels coming up in the air, the front wheel just starts spinning and it just starts digging and clawing your way to the top. I like doing that. I like just digging and clawing my way to the top of a steep hill rather than worry about going over backwards because the, you know, the rear wheel has so much torque and you're you know on an angle pulling the handlebars back. So the best I've seen for hill climbs has been dual motors, something like what I'm on. You know, this is a custom built one, but there is a company out there called Fabulous E-Bikes. They make a bunch of different dual motor versions. I know Unirail has a dual motor bike, uh, but this has just tons and tons of hill climb power. If that's what you're after, dual motors I think is the way to go. It's the easiest to work. A lot of people don't like the mid drives because you have to utilize the bike's mechanical gears in order to get the most out of the motor. That's the, the no-brainer. Go dual motor, and they're not that much more expensive, honestly. All right, what else? Uh, I think one of the last thing I'll say is that there are so many different styles and shapes and sizes of bikes out there that just think about how you're gonna use it, and there's probably a bike for that. You know, do you need cargo? Do you need speed and power for hill climbs? Do you wanna carry another person with you? Do you wanna go shopping with it? How tall are you? Just, I mean, you really need to do your research to pick the bike that's gonna be the best for you, but there's cargo bikes, there's commuter bikes, there's fat tire bikes, there's micro folding bikes. There's every single shape and size out there. But e-bikes are a ton of fun. I've had a blast riding them. And I've also been spoiled that I get to give people a lot of their first ride experience. Friends and family and everybody comes over to my house and I've got a million bikes there. And just seeing the look on their face when they come back from their first ride, and it's always the same reaction. Like, I've got to have one of these. I must have an e-bike. So if you haven't tried one yet, definitely go try it. It takes the work out of bicycling and then amplifies the fun of it, right? So that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed, found it entertaining, or maybe a little helpful. If you did, consider hitting subscribe, and I'll talk to y'all later. Thanks. Let's see if I can't show you the uh, dual motor hill climb power. We're not even gonna pedal up this hill over here. You see what I mean, we'll just twist the throttles and go. I don't even, I'm not even gonna get a run at it. This is what happens. Here the front wheel just digging. Effortless, totally effortless.